At some point in our lives, if you've driven for most of your life, like most of us have, you've probably been pulled over. So hopefully that interaction has been good. This first interaction is about a gal by the name of Ela. Ela was driving down the road with all of her friends. They just got out of church and she was taking them all home. She had her best friend next to her and three gals in the back of her car. She's just driving down the road, happy as, happy as can be. And a state trooper drives by her going the other direction and he goes, oh man, you gotta be kidding me. He whips around and he pulls her over. He was really confused. This state trooper is walking up to her vehicle and as he's walking up to her vehicle, she's rolling down her window and the state trooper looks at the three gals in the back and their faces are just white as ghosts. These gals are clutching onto their purses, half shaking. He gets up right up, up next to Ela and he goes, ma'am, do you know why I pulled you over? She goes, no, sir, I have no idea. I was going exactly the speed limit, 22 miles per hour. The state trooper goes, no, ma'am, you are actually going quite a bit under the speed limit. You see the speed limit on this road is 55 miles per hour. She goes, no, sir, I just drove by a sign and said 22. Ma'am, that's County Road 22. And the state trooper has to hold back a chuckle. He talks to her a little bit longer and says, well, ma'am, I'm going to let you off with a warning. Make sure that you're following the speed limit, not the county road. The state trooper turns around and starts to walk away, but he notices the gals in the back seat. They're still faces are white as snow. They're shaking as they're cl clutching onto their purses. He turns around and he comes back to Ela. He goes, Ela, if you don't mind me asking, are these gals going to be okay? And she goes, oh, yes, officer. We actually just turned on to County 22. We were driving on County 119. <laughs> the second story comes from, since we're coming up on Memorial Day, I thought I'd read a letter written to a farm gal's parents. It says, dear Ma and Pa, I am well. Hope you are well. Tell my brothers, Walt and brother Elmer, the Marine Corps beats working for old man Minch by a mile. Tell them to join up quick before all the places are filled. I was restless at first because you get to stay in bed till nearly 5 a.m. But I'm getting used to sleeping in. Tell Walt and Elmer, you, uh, all you do before breakfast is smooth your cot and shine some things. No hogs to slop, no feed to pitch, no mash to mix, no wood to split, no fire to lay, practically nothing. Men got to shave, but it's not too bad. There's warm water. Breakfast is strong on the trimmings like fruit, juice, cereal, eggs, bacon. Kind of weak, but there's no pork chops, there's no potatoes, there's no ham, no steak, no fried eggplant, pie, and other regular food. But tell Walt and Elmer, you can always sit by the two city boys who live off of coffee. Their food, it can be yours pretty easily. It holds you till noon when you get ready to feed again. It's no wonder these city boys can't walk too much. We go on route marches. These route marches, which the balloon sergeant says are long walks to harden us, if he thinks so. It's not my place to tell him different. A route march is just as far as our mailbox at the end of the driveway. <laughs> These city guys get sore feet and well, we all get to ride in trucks on the way back. The sergeant is like a school teacher. He nags a lot. The captain is like the school board. Majors and colonels, they just ride around and frown. They don't bother you none. This next will kill Walt and Elmer with laughing. I keep getting medals for shooting. I don't know why the bullseye is near his head, near big as those, the chipmunk's head that we shoot at all the time. They don't move. It ain't like shooting at the squirrels that are running by. All you get to do is lie there all comfortable and hit it. You don't even have to load your own cartridges. They come in boxes. <laughs> then we have what they call hand-to-hand -hand combat training. You get to wrestle them city boys. I really got to be careful though break them in half if I'm not too careful. It ain't like fighting that old bull at home. 
I'm about to, I'm about the best one that they got, except for this guy, Tug Jordan. He's from Silver Lake. I only beat him once. He joined about the same time as me, but you know, I'm five foot six, 130 pounds. He's six foot eight, nearly 300 pounds. Guess I can only, guess beating him once isn't so bad. Be sure to tell Walt and Elmer Elm, to hurry up and join before the others fellers get into this setup and come stampeding in. Your loving daughter, Alice. Back to you, Madam Postmaster.